Ah yes, hello my new student. You're most likely here because you were looking for a specific spell or are just curious about what spells there are in Magiclism and how to use them. Well, you've come to the right place. Don your robes and grab your wizarding hat, because we're about to open the encyclopedia for spells from A to Z. Just flicking through a couple of them, I found a spell that lets you shoot Hadoukens like Ryu, another one that lets you imitate the Railgun Girl from that one anime, and another one that turns you into devilish, demonic, furry, horn hot goat mama. I'm gonna make like the wind and go through them as fast as possible, so buckle up for this wild ride. Here's the index if you wanted to see a specific chapter. Alright, so here is your current mana pool and max mana. Your mana and its regeneration speed can be affected by mana efficiency, mana regeneration, mana sensitivity. Your sensitivity is increased based on your intelligence, which means big brain equals more mana. It can also be affected by having bionic power stored. For each kilojoule of power, you lose max mana in a 1 to 1 ratio, unless you take the biotech attunement, which reduces the loss by half or 2 to 1, which is why it's my favorite. <coughs> All spells fall into one of four categories. They can be teleporting, an effect buff or debuff, summoning which can consist either a creature or an item, and combat which can vary from damage type and its effect type. When actually casting a spell, there are multiple things to take into consideration. Failure chance is determined by the spell difficulty, the current level of the spell, your spell casting level, and your focus, which means if you're suffering from depression it can be harder to cast, as well as encumberment requirements. Somatic means you have to wave your arms around, encumberment beyond 20 for your arms will make it harder and longer to cast. Verbal means you need to speak, encumberment beyond 5 for your mouth will make it harder and longer to cast. Impeded by gloves means you need complex finger gestures, encumberment beyond 10 for your hands will make it harder and longer to cast. Requires mobility means you have to dance around like an idiot, encumberment beyond 20 for your legs will make it harder and longer to cast. Requires focus. Remember focus I just talked about? It makes the spell heavily rely on that, which means it will make it harder and longer to cast. So if you're mega depressed, you're gonna have a hard time. Casting costs, which can vary from mana, bionic power, stamina, even your own health. Casting time. There's a difference between seconds and moves. Seconds is static time that passes in the world to cast a spell. Moves is based on your move speed, so if you're quick, you can cast the spell easier rather than someone who's slow. And lastly, component requirements. If the spell requires a component, you actually have to be carrying it to cast it. You can't have it at your feet, which means if you wanted to cast Flame Sword and you didn't have a massive bag to carry that 2x sword you need, you have to have some sort of sheath to keep it in in order to cast, because you would need the use of both of your hands to wave around. Every time you attempt to cast a spell, you will be rewarded experience for it. Even if you fail to cast a spell, you'll gain experience for it. But when you successfully cast a spell, you gain more experience. One way to min max spell casting is to make it really difficult to cast a spell you want to level and just fail a thousand times without burning through all your mana. Now that you know what actually goes into spell casting, let's roll through them. I'll put the information for the current spell in this corner here, so if you're a nerd like I am, you can learn all the stats for it. Alright, first up we've got classless spells. These can be cast by anyone at any time provided you learn them. Magical Light. This spell gives you light for a short period of time. It outputs enough light to craft and read without penalty. It's a good substitute for an atomic lamp before you find one. Translocate Self. Extremely useful. It can save you a ton of time by teleporting you a vast distance to an active gate, or getting you out of a pickle if you're stuck and don't know what else to do, or you just want to get back home to rest. You can build a gate if you haven't found one yet. Blinding Flash. Pretty useful. Cast it before getting into melee combat. It blinds the target, making you harder to hit. Ethereal Grass. Pretty useful. Cast before melee combat as it slows targets in an AoE. Also helps distance yourself to run away or create more openings with ranged weapons. Dark Sight. Extremely good. Gives you one of the best night visions in the game. Lasts for quite a long time. Good for sneaking around at night or just general use. Obfuscated Body. Extremely good. Cast this before melee combat. It can save you some health by dodging a couple of hits. Aura of Protection. Not as useful as you might think. Even though it may give you protection from the elements, it doesn't last long enough to be very useful. Acid Resistance. Pretty useful, but only in specific circumstances against creatures that chuck acid at you. And it's a rather pain to learn as you have to craft a spell scroll for it. Crystallized Mana. Very useful late game for crafting and stockpiling resources. It should be used while at home as it makes you tired and requires a lot of mana. Mega Blast. It's questionably useful. If used on its own, can leave you in a pickle as it uses a lot of stamina, which 
keeps you from running far away. Or if you decide to fight can lead you out of breath rather quickly. I suppose if you use it in conjunction with Stone's Endurance to regain stamina would be an option if you were an Earth Shaper. Next up we have the Animist. Animists focus on summoning for their primary source of damage. The opposite school of magic is Magus, which keeps you from learning Magus spells. Summon Zombie. Summons a couple of zombies that clobber stuff for you. Can't act as bullet sponges, however its downside is that it costs you your own health, so you should use it sparingly. Best cast before combat to utilize how short-lived they are. Summon Skeleton. Summons a couple of skeletons that clobber stuff for you. Can't act as bullet sponges, however its downside is that it costs you your own health, so you should use it sparingly. Best cast before combat to utilize how short-lived they are. Summon Decayed Pouncer. Summons a couple of Decayed Pouncers that clobber stuff for you. Can act as bullet sponges, however its downside is that costs you your own health, so you should use it sparingly. Best cast before combat to utilize how short-lived they are. Soul Rend. Pretty useful as a finishing blow if there are other enemies nearby. Creates an ally on killing blow. It can act as a bullet sponge and clobber stuff for you. Smite. Has a quick cast time and deals a fair amount of pure damage. While lacking in damage in the beginning, if you level the spell up enough, it can be very strong. Life Conversion. Not recommended for use at all. While its mana regeneration scales with level, so does the health it consumes. The only practical use is if you are at home and want to create extra crystallized mana, or for someone who is extremely impatient, which for the accident prone is definitely not recommended. Mind Over Pain. Even though the concept of pain reduction is neat, it consumes stamina. The only practical use it has is if you're in mind-shattering pain and unable to fall asleep, which isn't very often. Bleed. Pretty useful as it deals pure damage, though it lacks in damage in the beginning. If you level this spell up enough, it can be a good option to deal some extra damage. Decaying Bone Club. It's borderline trash. The description gives the impression that you heal by using it. For clarification, it doesn't. It also costs health and has components, and the weapon itself is trash. Ignis Fatus, which is Latin for Ignia Fatuo which means elusive fire. Pretty useful, it can distract and light up targets, giving you a chance to run. But if you just need light, the magical light is far superior for that purpose. Necrotic Gaze. Not very useful as it costs health and only deals biological damage. It might be a viable option against certain opponents if you were to get it to a high enough level. Next up we have the Storm Shaper. Storm Shapers focus on electric damage. The opposite school of magic is Kelvinist, which keeps you from learning Kelvinist spells. Shocking Lash. It can be useful. Its damage is pretty bad, although it has a chance to jump to multiple targets. It can be somewhat usable if you were to get it to a high enough level. Wind Running. Very good. A must-have if you're a Storm Shaper. Or if you happen to find it, it can be a really good option. It increases move speed for a short time. Jolt. Fairly good. Its damage is pretty good and it casts in a cone. There are better options, but if you have this, you might as well use it. Wind Strike. Situationally useful. Its damage is pretty good and has good range. Pushes enemies back in a cone. Throw it out if you're in a pickle. Call Storm Hammer. Pretty decent. It has very good bashing damage, which makes it versatile against many targets. However, watch out as it lights up and might make you a target. Lightning Bolt. Very good. It's a Storm Shaper's bread and butter. It deals damage in line of sight and area of effect, and has lingering lightning tendrils that can deal extra damage, but they also hurt you, so it's best used in a tunnel or if retreating. Lightning Blast. Somewhat useful, it's basically the Storm Shaper's fireball. It deals good damage in a smaller area of effect, good against small groups of enemies. Ionization. Really good. Use this against large groups of enemies as the lightning tendrils will deal extra damage as well as cripple your enemies if it doesn't outright kill them. Lightning Storm. Really good. It's a souped up version of Lightning Blast. Better damage and a larger area of effect. Repelling Arc. Pretty good if you don't have another aura spell that's better. It damages melee attackers. Summon it right before combat for optimal use. Wall of Fog. Situationally useful. It can knock any enemies down caught within line of sight while casting inside its area of effect. Only really useful if you're backed in a corner with a large group of enemies after you. It can give you time to teleport, but not much use for much else. Next up we have the Earth Shaper. Earth Shapers focus on bash, cut, and stab damage. The opposite school of magic is Technomancer, which keeps you from learning Technomancer spells. Seismic Stomp. Situationally useful. Its damage isn't that great and slows enemies. Use when escaping or if surrounded. If the spell was at a high enough level and you had enough mana, you could destroy stuff easily without having to do anything. Rock Bolt. A decent single target spell that lacks in damage and has good range. It doesn't consume much mana, which makes it a good beginner spell. Shard Spray. Has pretty good damage for mana costs in a cone, however its component requirements are rather annoying. Unless you plan to be carrying around a bunch of garbage, you won't ever be casting this. Piercing Bolt. Does pretty good damage, similar to Rock Bolt, but does stab damage. Shard Storm. Basically Shard Spray without the annoying component requirements. It costs twice the mana with half the range, but is a viable damage spell if it gets to a high enough level. 
Stone's Endurance. One of the best spells in the game is it converts mana to stamina. However, its offset is that it's in the Earth Shaper's School of Magic. So if you're an Earth Shaper, this is a must-have spell. Let's you run far, chop more enemies down, and get yourself into more trouble without having to stress the issue of needing to catch your breath. Clairvoyance. Let's you see everything around you for a second, even through walls. It costs a lot of mana, but being able to see something dangerous before it sees you lets you get the jump on the situation without it getting bad. Pillar of Stone. Has a very long cast time, but being able to create permanent walls for your house at the cost of a little mana makes it a seriously good spell for base building. However, its low level can damage furniture and other stuff nearby. So make sure the area is free of stuff before you start building. Stone Fist. Pretty good. If you plan on building for unarmed type damage, then this is an excellent choice. It is auto-worn as gauntlets and can be used as such, but wielding them for unarmed damage is far better. Excellent for styles that block as they're tough. Stone Skin. Covers your entire body in a layer of stone. Amazing for defense. However, it encumbers you a lot, which makes you a tank. So running usually isn't a good idea. Because of the encumberment, it makes it extremely hard to stop bleeding if they make it past your defense, which can lead you to taking more damage than you think you would. Functionally, only really good early game for taking on a couple of zombies without getting yourself torn to pieces to level up unarmed. Next up we have the Druid. Druids are a mix of decent damage and miscellaneous use. The opposite school of magic is Biomancer, which keeps you from learning Biomancer spells. Wooden Shaft, a good beginner's spell. Functionally not very useful. Its low mana cost, decent range, and low damage make it good for leveling up spellcasting early. Vegetative Grass, basically ethereal grass for the druid. Deals less damage, however causes a fair amount of bleeding, so it can be fairly useful for retreating, while also damaging targets that struggle to follow you. Root Strike, deals decent damage in a small cone while also causing bleeding. Good for wearing down enemies in clumped up areas, small tunnels, enclosed areas, and doorways. Nature's Bow. If you're a druid, this is most likely the reason why you became one. It creates a temporary bow that's very good. Can carry you through most of the game alone, but falls off in how much damage it can output very quickly as soon as enemies stack up. Relying on it becomes a bad idea late game. Nature's Trance. Can become extremely good not needing any sleep at all if you have enough mana. Lets you get more work in during the day, completely foregoing fatigue needs as long as you don't need to cast any other spells in the day. Torn Skin. Don't use this spell. It causes bleeding and doesn't do very much damage within its area of effect which includes you, which is why you shouldn't even consider casting this. Bag of Cats. Situationally useful, can act as dummies leading enemies away from you. Use them to soak up damage or just body block targets before reaching you. Feral Form. Situationally useful, it requires components which makes it a spell you most likely won't use. However, once cast, summons a feral aura that increases your strength and dexterity by 3 and reduces your intelligence and perception by 3. Purification Seed. Very good early game, can purify up to 15 units of water or 1 gallon. However, it consumes a lot of mana which can make you think twice before casting it. Summons a purification seed which has to be activated, then turn to dust, which can then be added to your water source. Sacrificial healing. Don't even think about using this. Unless you plan on saving every NPC you find, it's a massive waste of health. It's better if you don't even learn this, so you don't even have to think about using it. Sacrificial regrowth. Not even worth thinking about. It requires health to use, can speed up regrowth speed to barren plants, but is not even worth using as the regeneration speed is negligible. Summon wolf. Very good. Much better than the other types of summon spells out there. While the wolves themselves may not be very tanky, it's still better than spending health to create a couple of bullet sponges. Cause Bear. While the spell may not seem like much, it can be well utilized to get in and let it cause some havoc while you retreat. Next up we have the Mages. Mages focus on pure damage. The opposite school of magic is Animist, which keeps you from learning Animist spells. Magic Missile. This spell is the beginner's bomb. Level it up and wreck house. It's a single target spell that doesn't deal a whole lot of damage in the beginning, however it deals pure damage and its easy availability makes it the absolute powerhouse once it's leveled up a few times. Phase Door. Somewhat useful. It teleports you in a random direction provided there's an empty tile and can teleport through walls, however take caution as if you're on an upper level you can teleport in mid which can lead to a lot of accidental fall damage. Gravity Well, very useful, pulls enemies into target location, good for clumping up enemies, deals a fair amount of damage on its own, useful in conjunction with area of effect spells. Shadow Field, very good, useful for running away, denying line of sight, and hiding yourself in plain view. Its duration time lacks in the beginning for how useful it is, however, can be very useful at higher levels. Escape, it's a gamble for its usefulness. It teleports you a random distance in any direction, which can be used for escaping as the spell implies, but may put you in more danger, cast a spell if you really have no other option. Haste. Extremely good, useful in any scenario, grants a short-lived burst of speed, good for melee 
melee combat, getting in extra shots in before enemies get close, running away, or just general exploring. Mana Beam, extremely good, deals pure damage within line of sight, area of effect, best utilized in tunnels and clumped up enemies. Mana Bolt, a better upgraded magic missile, deals more pure damage, slightly shorter range, and can't go through walls, however, still a powerhouse, highly recommended. Mana Blast, it's Mana Bolt, but with an area of effect, extremely good, best utilized on clumped up enemies, a major powerhouse, highly recommended. Impact Sling, while not as good as Wood Bow created by Nature's Bow in terms of damage, Impact Sling requires a regular sling as a component to cast, but surpasses the Wood Bow in range, which makes it a better pick for some people. Me personally, because of it. Cat's Grace, very good. While it may have a semi-long cast time, grants a temporary 4 to dexterity, best cast before ranged or melee combat. Ogre's Strength, very good. While it may have a semi-long cast time, grants a temporary 4 to strength, best cast before melee combat or for certain crafting requirements. Fox's Cunning, very good. While it may have a semi-long cast time, grants a temporary 4 to intelligence. Best cast for certain crafting requirements and hacking terminals. Eagle's Sight, very good. While it may have a semi-long cast time, grants a temporary 4 to perception, best cast while checking for traps. Baleful Polymorph, the only spell in the Magus' list that isn't very useful, turns a target under a certain amount of hit points into a frog. The HP requirement is so low that you shouldn't even consider using the spell as you'll most likely kill the target before you have a chance to. However, does have a functionality. If leveled high enough, the high range may make it a viable option for use late game as the frog can be butchered and used for food. Sorry about my voice on this one, had to re-record this. Next up we have the Calvinist. Calvinists focus on heat and cold damage, the opposite school of magic is Storm Shaper, which keeps you from learning Storm Shaper spells. Point Flare, pretty good, has excellent damage though it lacks in range, good against taking out single targets at a time. Ice Spike, pretty good, has excellent damage though it lacks in range, good against taking out single targets at a time. Fireball, one of the d and favorite spells, deals excellent damage within the area of effect at the target, best used on clumps of enemies. Burning Hands, one of the d and favorite spells, deals excellent damage within the cone's area of effect best used on clumps of nearby enemies. Finger Fire Lighter, a great beginner spell, can start fires easily, excellent for replacing items that can start fires which can save you inventory weight and volume. Flame Sword, not really useful, it creates a sword that deals alright damage, a good beginner weapon at the start, and the components for it are easy to make, however casting the spell can be a pain with the new inventory space update. Cone of Cold, one of the D&D's favorite spells, deals excellent damage within the cone's area of effect, best used on clumps of nearby enemies. Hori Blast, basically a cold fireball, deals excellent damage within the area of effect at the target, best used on clumps of enemies. Chilling Touch, not entirely useful unless you get it to a high level, deals a small amount of damage but requires contact to the target to use. Frost Spray, basically burning hands but ice instead of fire, deals excellent damage within the cone's area of effect, best used on clumps of nearby enemies. Flame Breath, a questionably better Burning Hands, deals more damage and damage over time in a cone, however, requires components that are a pain to lug around and find. Frost Armor, fairly good, covers your entire body in a layer of ice that encumbers you a little. While it has less encumberment penalties to stone skin, it also has less protection, but is still a better option in my opinion as you're more mobile and able to stop bleeding easier. Glide on Ice, creates a pair of slick icy coatings that are effectively used as roller blades, useful for traveling on roads and other areas where roller skates are useful. Ice Shield, creates a pretty decent temporary substitute for an actual shield, lets you block attacks and use techniques with it. Nova Flare, a souped up version of Point Flare, deals a ton of damage against a target it requires components, however very manageable and easy to find for how much damage it deals. Freezing Touch. This spell is questionably good, deals major damage and freezes the target within touch range, however its component requirements are a huge pain to even consider using. Next up we have the Technomancer. Technomancers have a ton of uses and are not bound to just one. The opposite school of magic is Earthshaper, which keeps you from learning Earthshaper spells. Taze. Deals good contact damage, viable for use at higher levels. Lesser Quantum Tunnel, teleports you similar to Phase Door in a random direction, however its range is slightly larger and may make it a better option in certain situations. Synaptic Stimulation, extremely good, increases your dexterity and intelligence by 4 as well as your move speed for quite a bit of time, used as the situation calls for it as the duration of it is so long. 
Animated Blade, very good. Summons an Animated Blade and although it may not last long, can deal a very good amount of damage even at low levels if used properly. Extremely good at higher levels, you can chop your enemies down without even having to lift a finger. Mirror Image, an excellent spell to distract targets and act as a bullet sponge. Ties well into the second spell which is... Holographic Transposition, extremely useful, lets you teleport with a close previously created hologram. It can get you out of a sticky situation if you cast Mirror Image close by before combat. Knife Shot, very good, deals good damage to a target, has good range, and a small cast time. Requires components, but are easily accessible for most houses. Bless, extremely good, can be cast on yourself or an ally, increases strength, dexterity, perception by 2, and increases move speed. Best cast before combat. Lamp. A better upgrade to Magical Light for exploration purposes. It lights up a larger area, however, a good alternative would be Dark Sight, as it costs less mana and lasts longer without blowing your cover of being in the dark. Invisibility. Good for creeping around if you like to avoid fights. If you want to utilize this a lot, the best way possible, you should really take Weak Scent and Light Step as starting traits as they tie together well. It doesn't last long, however, if leveled up high enough can be very useful for exploration. Laze. One of the most well-rounded spells in the Techromancer's arsenal. It has good damage and good range, and can pierce walls. Holy Blade. Very good. Creates a temporary Holy Blade that deals really good damage, and although it may get a lot of shame for not lasting long, it's exceedingly good if you level up high enough to make it a viable option so you can chop down your enemies that disrespect your women like a modern White Knight Paladin. Spiritual Armor. Very good. Creates a set of temporary plate armor with no helmet, boots, or gloves that has really good protection, and although it may get a lot of shame for not lasting long, it's exceedingly good if you level up high enough to make it a viable option so you can tank attacks for your women like a modern White Knight Paladin. Manatricity. A very good utility spell if you tend to rely on bionics, or if you don't have another source of bionic power. It converts mana to bionic power in a 1 to 1 ratio. Knock. Rather useful, can open closed and locked wooden doors. Good for not wanting to damage doorways so you can close them. If leveled up can also be useful for opening them up at a distance which can help in avoiding damage from opening random doors with enemies behind them. Improved Knock. As the name implies, is a better version of Knock and extremely useful. Can open closed and locked metal doors which can be very useful in labs and places where you would normally have to hack terminals to get inside or if you failed then you don't need a lug around stuff to bust it open. Explosives, Acetylene Torch, Jackhammer, Pickaxe which is annoying. Optical Sneeze Beam, extremely good, deals very good damage in its area of effect cone, has very good range, after casting has a few seconds of drawback effects, best utilized in tunnels and clumped up enemies. For how good the spell is, is offset by obtaining it. This can be a huge pain as you have to install a crystallized mana nose, which is a rather rare find, and that is if you don't botch the surgery needed to install it. Summon Floating Disc. Very useful for hauling around items, it summons a temporary floating disc which can be pushed and pulled around similar to a shopping cart and has the same functionality. I'm rather surprised for all the D&D references and magicalism that they didn't add something to this, as it's Tensor's Floating Disc. A suggestion I would make is if they made it an NPC that is easily interacted with instead of this. X-ray vision, really good. Reveals an area within a cone for a split second. Being able to see something dangerous before it sees you. Lets you get the jump on the situation without it getting bad. As it takes bionic power instead of mana, it's far superior in my opinion to the Earth Shaper's clairvoyance. Summon Mojo Cycle. Insanely useful. Summons a Mojo Cycle, which is a dope motorcycle. If you don't have a vehicle yet, this can be used to go from location to location, or just to get to some place fast without having to take a vehicle you have to drive back. After you level the spell up enough, it lasts for a very long time, making it out of this world for utility uses and traveling. And for anybody who's afraid of using this, you don't have to worry as when it despawns, you're completely safe and not thrown off. However, because of how good it is, the spell scroll is extremely rare. Next up we have the Biomancer. Biomancers focus on self-enhancement and weaponry. The opposite school of magic is Druid, which keeps you from learning Druid spells. Pain Split. Extremely useful, it evens out the health value for all your body parts, which is important for your head and torso, as it can can save you from potential death or keep you from having crippled limbs that take forever to heal. Cure Light Wounds. Extremely useful, as the name implies heals a body part by a little bit. And even though it consumes a lot of mana, it is well worth it to heal body parts, if only slightly. And once leveled up to max, it is incredibly potent. Vicious Tentacle. Very good. You create a whip that has a reach attack, which is amazing as you can keep a slight distance from your target without putting yourself at risk of taking damage. Grotesque Enhancement. Extremely useful. It gives 1 to strength, dexterity, perception, as well as a slight move speed increase. It can be cast repeatedly, stacking the effect on itself, making it the best temporary buff spell you can use. Acidic Spray. Very good. It deals decent damage in a cone, and one of the few spells in the game to deal acid damage which makes it exceedingly useful against armored targets. 
flesh pouch, somewhat usable. While not useful for the entire playthrough, it can act as extra storage space when looting in case you want to bring a few extra items along, or you just don't want to make that second trip. Very useful early game, not as useful late game. Conjure Bone Spear. Very good. You create a spear that has a reach attack, which is amazing as you can keep a slight distance from your target without putting yourself at the risk of taking damage. However, you should cast this spell while you still have some distance from your enemies as it's quite difficult to cast. You might fail once or twice. Caustic Aura. Somewhat good. One cast will create an acid aura that damages melee attackers and increases potential melee damage on enemies. However, its components are annoying to obtain and doesn't last long, so should be used when it's been leveled high enough to be useful during melee combat. Coagulant Weave. Extremely good. The description of it may be a little confusing. It doesn't purge runes, rather keeps them from even happening in the first place. Once cast and while active makes you immune to bleeding, deep wounds, and regenerates stamina considerably faster than you normally would. At the cost of increased hunger and thirst, which is an extremely good trade. Paralytic Dart. Good, but only for wearing down single targets. It causes bleeding and slows down the target. Visceral Projection. Not very useful. Comparable to the Earth Shaper's Seismic Stomp, but worse. Deals a negligible amount of damage and slows targets. Not even worth to consider using. Attunement Specific Spells. When you obtain an attunement, you automatically learn all the spells for it, and the spells are automatically level 5. You know the thing about video editing? Continue. Yeah, I ended up getting sick, but still wanted to finish editing the video. You might want to take a step back because I found out it was the big bad sick. Yeah, the one that everyone makes a big deal of. So you'll just have to put up with my weird voice. Spy Wasp. Very good. Reveals a large distance in front of you and has a crazy long range compared to the Technomancer's X-ray vision. Very useful. Artificer's Toolkit. Very good. Creates a temporary toolkit with almost every needed crafting quality. Perfect for substituting almost any tool you might be missing. Nitro Boost. Very useful. When cast at target will leave a trail of fire that deals a lot of damage to anything that walks through it, which is good for making a small flame wall that kills most weak enemies who step through it, and the target at location takes a very good amount of bash damage. And a side note, Nitro Boost is broken for the actual damage dealt. I had to tweak the mod file itself to get it to work, which was a massive pain. I'll show you how to get it enabled at the end of the video if you're interested. Jury Rig. Extremely good. A better upgraded Cure Wounds heals twice as much health, however it takes components, but the required components aren't hard to come by which makes this a very good spell. Greater Banishment doesn't fully work as intended. If the spell deals more damage over the target's hit points, it completely deletes it. No corpse, no blood, no items. It's supposed to add the extra HP over the damage dealt to you, but that isn't implemented. Demonic Possession, somewhat useful, reduces intelligence by 4, perception by 3, grants deadened pain reduction, huge which gives you 4 strength, demon horns which grants an extra attack and a little head protection, demon claws that grant an extra attack, but the downsides are absolutely awful. The huge mutation makes you unable to wear basically anything, so unless you're at the end of your ropes and have no gear you shouldn't even consider using this, or if you're female and just want to turn yourself into a hot demon goat. Auroral Wave. Very good. Deals very good damage in a cone, has a rather short range, good against clumped up close enemies. Immolate. Very good. A souped up version of Fireball. Deals extremely good damage and hurls enemies away from target location best use against clumped up enemies that are close to you. Quake, a superior version of Seismic Stomp, deals twice as much damage and creates rough terrain making nearby enemies have a harder time getting to you. Good in a pinch if you find yourself surrounded, however it causes trouble for you as it basically makes a safe zone with you at the center, so be sure to clear out nearby enemies before you leave it. However, it does consume quite a bit of mana, so best use it sparingly. Rock Blast, a superior version of Mega Blast that is single target instead of line of sight, uses stamina and deals bash damage instead of heat. Good when used in conjunction with Stone's Endurance, but not much else. Lacks in damage at early levels, but can be viable once at a high level. Flare Whip. Not very good. A less potent version of Vicious Tentacle. Deals less damage, however has a faster use speed. Burns targets a little, if not setting them on fire, and has longer lasting duration, but in overall power is less useful. Flare Up. Not very good. Deals lots of damage within contact range, which can lead you to taking damage. Doesn't consume a lot of mana, so it could lead to being well utilized if you juke around your targets and utilize move speed, but overall not very practical. Force Blade, pretty good. Deals a good amount of damage in line of sight and at good range. Good against clumped up enemies. Force Shield, not very good, but still useful. Makes you harder to hit and protects you a little over your entire body. While there are better aura spells you can use, this one lasts a very long time, making it good for lazy people. Well, it's supposed to work that way as it's broken. The passive protection multiplier doesn't function as it's supposed to. Ice Clave, pretty good. Deals good damage in a cone, has a rather short range, good against clumped up close enemies. 
Frozen Winds. Pretty good. Deals some damage in a cone, has a rather short range, but pushes enemies back a fair bit. Useful if you're in a bind or need to create some distance. Golem Push. Kind of garbage. Pushes a target back within contact range. Requires hell to cast and doesn't deal damage, which makes it absolute garbage. Gravitation Polarization. A superior version of Gravity Well. It pulls anything caught inside its area of effect slightly towards its center. Good for chaining spells that utilize damage inside of an area of effect. Over Accelerate. Very good. Deals a bunch of damage over time against a single target. Best used against a single strong target with a bunch of health that needs to be worn down. Sub-Zero Talons. Somewhat useful. Creates a pair of talons that don't last very long. Deals somewhat usable damage. Very fast speed which makes it damage per second off the charts. However, don't use it against armored targets as the damage won't be good enough. Spear of Light. Very good. Deals good damage against a single target, blinding them. Best used against single targets with a lot of health. Railgun. Extremely good. Not to be confused with the Railgun Bionic. Deals extremely good damage at very far range, however requires components. This would be the only spell I would use that takes components that I would use regularly as it deals an insane amount of damage. Short Wave. Not even worth using. It deals pure damage in an area of effect, but you're caught in the damage which makes this spell trash. Gamma Burst. Not even worth using. It deals pure damage in an area of effect centered on you, but you're caught in the damage which makes this spell trash. Burn at both ends. A stronger version of Over Accelerate. Shorter range, but still very powerful. Use against single targets with a lot of health. Soul Afterburner. Absolute trash. It consumes health and it's supposed to increase your move speed, but as the spell's broken, it doesn't affect it. Don't use this spell. Storm Chain. Not very useful in my opinion. A direct downgrade to Shocking Lash. Deals good damage against a touch range target that can chain to multiple targets. Not recommended for use as you have to put yourself in danger and there are many other spells that deal damage within an area of effect that use less mana. Solar Beam. Very good. In my opinion, a direct upgrade of Spear of Light. It deals less damage than it, but can hit multiple targets in line of sight, burns them, and blinds them with good range. Good against clumped up enemies, although uses a lot of mana, so make your shots count. Cold Snap. Extremely useful. Doesn't deal a whole lot of damage, but makes up for it by its quick casting time and the ability to slow down if not freeze the target in place. Very good in conjunction with summoning spells, as you can slow single targets down that get close to you without having to slow down allies as well, making them more of a target for your minions. Winter Wolf's Call. Pretty good. Some a couple of winter wolves that are pretty strong that clobber stuff for you, can act as bullet sponges and deal quite a bit of damage. Best cast before combat to utilize how short-lived they are. Lava Bomb, a really potent multi-purpose spell. It deals damage in an area of effect, even though it may deal bash damage, the shrapnel deals cut damage and the explosion deals heat damage, and creates lava at the center which can deny enemies from moving around. Assassin's Strike, only useful against non-mechanical creatures, has a quick cast time and deals a lot of damage over time, and once cast will teleport you a random safe distance creating a toxic smoke cloud. However, it costs a lot of mana to cast, so it's not worth using most of the time. Mutation. Although these are technically spells, you have to mutate into either Black Dragon or Mana Touch to use them. Acid Claw. Very good. A direct upgrade to Acidic Spray. Deals acid damage in a large cone at decent range. Acid Bite. Very good. A single target contact range spell that deals acid damage. Black Dragon Shell. Extremely useful. Gives very good overall protection it counts as an aura, and if I would have to pick, this would be the best one in the game. Dragon Terror. Slows targets in an area of effect centered on you. Not very useful as the range is short. Dragon Boost. Very good. Increases strength by 4. Increases move speed with stamina and health regeneration. Dragon Acid Spit. Very good. Basically Acid Claw that is single target at good range. Black Dragon Breath. Very good. Basically Dragon Acid Spit with less damage and damages all enemies with an area of effect line. Crystallized Mana. A better upgrade to the other Crystallized Mana. Has the exact same name but produces four times as much Crystallized Mana. Very good late game for stockpiling resources. Seeker Bolts. Not very useful. While it may deal pure damage, it doesn't deal a lot and it auto targets the closest hostile target. And that's every single spell in the base game. I didn't cover these two because this video was long overdue. And now I'll show you how to semi-fix Nitro Boost. For a note, the damage won't scale with level, so you have to manually edit it or just leave it at max damage. First, go down in the description, copy this line of text here. Then go to CDDA, Data, Mods, Magiclism, Spells, Attunements, 
then edit biotech with notepad in an editor. I'm using notepad++ or find the location where it's at from the shortcut and paste it right in the top here. Normally it has 50 damage at starting level 5, but I just leave it at max which is 350. Gotta get that money, gotta get that ad revenue. No big corpse gonna take my gold just cause YouTube told me so. YMFA was right. All those little trolls of light. I learned how to use LMS just to bank my Porsche on hold. Being a small creator makes you unfavored. They just take what's yours because they can. Can, 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 because they can be 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 because they can be 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 because they can be 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 because they can be 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 because they can be 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 because they can Because they can.